All right, guys, it's Ed for my bring back, and I want to continue talking to you about import statements and getting stuff out of external modules. And so we're going to keep playing with the time module just for the time being, and we'll pray it's time well spent. Let's continue to take a look. Okay, so nothing too wild in this little script here we're taking a look at. We import that time module just like we did last go round, and then we call functions from it. We've got this time function, this local time function, that ASC time function, and if we go ahead and run this thing, the output will not shock us. Uh, you know, there's all those seconds since 1970, here's that time tuple, and here is a nicely formatted thing. So what I'm here to show you today is that you can change the way you import modules and then change the syntax that you use to employ pieces of that module later on. So we're going to stick with the time module for now. Over the course of the following videos, we're going to use many other modules to show you many other things. But because this one should be relatively fresh in your brain, we're going to stick with it. So the first thing you can do differently that I'm going to show you is you can import something under a different name or a different alias. So we're going to import time as t here. And what that enables us to do is to replace any time we're calling things with that time module with simply t dot as opposed to time dot. And let's take a look. Ah, wound up with an error. You'll notice that nested within the calls of those functions that still had references to the time module. So you gotta be thorough when you do that. Obviously this is something you probably do at the beginning and, uh, and not after you have a script written. But if you do, be sure to replace all references with the name you've given it, because otherwise it won't work. Let's go ahead and run it again. Things look right. And as we can see, that much time has passed. So that one's not too earth shattering. Uh, mostly just going to save you some keystrokes if you're working at the uh, the console, you know, in in, uh, in a shell type environment rather than building a script and running it. That can be certainly handy, especially with some of the modules that have less wieldy names. Another thing you can do is import specific pieces of a module. So we're going to import from time. Oops, rather, let's get the syntax directly. We'll do from time import just time up here. And let's go back to make these all time. Save it and run it. And you'll see we've wound up with an error here and that's because I don't need to call time.time. I've gotten that function just on its own when I use that from time import statement. So we can just call time straight off the bat. We don't need to prepend anything to it if we save this and run it. Let's look what happens. Okay. It's going to print time.time .time like we're used to seeing it, the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970 at midnight. But then we get errors on the other methods. And even if I were to take the time portions off of these other methods, like I'm about to do for the sake of showing you what happens, it's not going to work. I'll give you this warning. Uh, because we haven't imported those particular functions, we've only imported that time function. So even if I save this and run it, Ah, about the period in there. We'll see. I get the first one, not the second ones. The way that you can get yourself to the position where you can call all of these things with nothing in front of them is to import all of the names from time. And you do that with the following syntax. You would say from time, import, and then instead of time there, you just replace that with this asterisk character. We'll save this and run it. And you'll see everything prints as normal. Now that is a move you can make if you're not working with a variety of modules. If you are working with a variety of modules, it can be something that is dangerous to do. Some modules may contain functions or classes or objects with the same names, and that's not going to work out for you if within your namespace you have multiple things using the same name. So if you're going to use that from module import everything, syntax. Uh, just, just be warned that's an issue you can run into. So that is a very brief look at alternatives to getting pieces of modules into your scripts for running in Python. Um, play with them, toy with them, look at other people's examples. You'll see all of these syntaxes uh, used widely as you go through and look at other people's code and learn things. So again, this is Ed for my bring back. I had a great time today showing you all this nonsense and I hope you continue to spend your time watching these videos and go ahead and subscribe, man. We'll try not to waste it. Uh, you're time that is.